uh, and uh, on that note, uh, I'm going to welcome on Dr. Cole Zanetti, um, Senior Advisor, Chief Health Informatics Officer and Acting Director uh, from the US Department of Veterans Affairs. Hi, Cole, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Perfect. Lovely to be here. Yes, wonderful to have you on, Cole. Um, thanks so much for, uh, for your time to come and talk about uh, innovation and also uh, you know, digital health. Is it, uh, is it the one and done thing? Uh, basically. So uh, I'd, love to, uh, I'd love for you to give us a bit of background about yourself uh, for uh, those folks in the audience that, uh, that don't know you. Sure. Uh, so um, I'm a family physician, preventive medicine physician, and clinical informatics uh, uh, doctor that worked in the private sector uh, as a, uh, in the field of innovation for a number of years. Uh, uh, also helps uh, start create a, a digital health training program for for medical uh, medical school in Colorado and Utah, um, and uh, end up uh, transitioning into the VA and served and continue to serve as a senior advisor for the VA's innovation ecosystem, where we work with emerging technologies and innovative entrepreneurs, uh, both internally and external to the VA, to help really emphasize providing the best quality and experience for our veterans and their caregivers. Um, I've worked as a chief health informatics officer here in Charleston, and my most uh, uh, recent role is I'm acting uh, director of value-based care for the VA's National Center for uh, Care and Payment Innovation, where we're really looking to, to integrate uh, these efforts and align um, uh, funding in a way that makes sense. Uh, we're very well positioned because we don't actually operate under the same rules as CMS uh, in, in how we provide care. Uh, we can fund things uh, much differently and we're literally creating new uh, care models to emphasize how to best leverage that experience as well as new funding models uh, to provide a more easy and sustainable way for us to execute that at scale across the VA. No, perfect. Uh, thank you so much for the work that you do um, with the VA and stuff. And, and, you know, I know that you're currently uh, working around what's called the Pathfinder program. We'd love to hear more about that at the VA. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that, you know, we have an amazing uh, uh, team within the VA, uh, including uh, uh, Miss Susie Shirley, who is on, on the call today, who really helped create this uh, with with uh, colleagues within uh, you know her purview, the innovation ecosystem, as well as industry collaborators across the country to to acknowledge, I think the elephant in the room, which was how do we actually partner with the VA? It wasn't a clear process. You didn't know who to reach out to. So Susie and her team did an absolutely amazing thing and actually worked to solve that problem. And that solution is this uh, the VA Pathfinder. Now that's a website. You see what Susie just put in the chat there. Please click on it, look at it, uh, be able to go through it. But the, the main point here is we try to create a seamless process for um, people outside of uh, the VA, external stakeholders who are interested in uh, partnering with the VA to, to design a solution for our veterans. Uh, sell to the VA if they already have a solution that uh, is, is ready in that, um, in that category and state. And it really helps us uh, better enable uh, market research for procurement of these solutions and provides the VA current awareness for what's available uh, to provide the best care to our veterans. So it's, it's a repository that we are collecting this information uh, tethering our current problem or um, areas of opportunity within the VA to uh, partnership opportunities that 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 exist that are being submitted, and really working through how we seamlessly partner. No, that's wonderful, and you know, wonderful that we can you, you can you can talk about it on this platform and really inform people about it, uh, especially if it's not something that's that's uh, that's well known out there and stuff. Um, on the topic. Um, uh, Cole of uh, of talking about kind of that quote unquote final stage of care delivery uh, and stuff. What are your thoughts on you know the adoption of digital health right now, you know, specific you know, to the, to the stuff that you do at the VA, uh, you know, in terms of it being adopted for uh, for that final stage of of care. 
I, I think there, there's an amazing opportunity and, and we're really trying to push forward in adopting uh, uh, great uh, evidence-based uh, quality experiences for our veterans that really make care um, more convenient, uh, allow it to take place more in the home. Because there's two things in healthcare that exist no matter where you are in the United States. You're never going to have enough staff to provide the care if we continue to provide care the way that we do. And we're never going to have enough space to provide that care to that same notion. So we're constantly looking for ways to leverage uh, technology that makes sense to make care more convenient, to reduce administrative burden, both for the veteran, their caregiver, as well as the care teams that are trying to provision that care and make it available in the home or in uh, the convenient settings by which we can have it as much as possible. And Pathfinder, as I said before, is a great way to kind of get in that door to start those conversations. We have hundreds of uh, innovation projects, uh, close to 400 or more across the, the, the VA and across the country. I mean, when you're talking about the greatest opportunity uh, in terms of a laboratory to both learn you know, we're the, the largest health system in the country. We have veterans that we, we uh, continue to follow no matter where they move. And we have data collection to support that care uh, throughout the system. And, and we're resourced uh, in, in much more, I think, s sustainable ways than the private sector, while at the same time, not beholden to the CMS rules of payment and reimbursement if we're able to do direct contracts with uh, with uh, solutions uh, to target opportunities. So, I mean, it's uh, to me, it's it's a it, it's a perfect marriage of of opportunity and reduction of obstacles to to really deploy uh, across the United States. If you if you prove it in the VA and you scale it across our system, um, that leaves room for us to be able to have conversations at a larger level with CMS um, to say, look what you know, look at the cost savings, look at the effect. These are the things that would need to change for this to be sustainable in the private sector. No, that's terrific. That's absolutely terrific. No, thank you for, uh, again, just being that source of information here uh, for folks that, uh, that, that, that may be not, not aware of that and, and giving such a good, a good uh, overall umbrella explanation uh, of, uh, of how to partner with the VA and so forth. Just to wrap us up, uh, Cole, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, speaking with you earlier uh, last week around about you know that you know, the views on what you know, last mile delivery effectively is or final care delivery um you know from your perspective where does it really end um you know in terms of that in, in terms of care delivery and 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 is there a terminus so i i think we we typically consider um or we we wrap solutions around conditions right and and we try to compartmentalize interventions, uh, sadly, because of how things get reimbursed, as opposed to how uh, disease or chronic disease or disease progression really occurs. So th the, the real endpoint uh, is uh, the need to be able to sustainably be a partner uh, in the, the health experience for the patient, right? And how do you do that? So it's not disruptive in their life. Um, and the, the ultimate end goal is making sure that what we're working towards actually matters to the patient. That's why those concepts of patient reported outcome measures that you hear a lot more about in Sweden, starting to see that a little bit in the NHS world, not so much in the United States at scale. But those are the things that we are ultimately trying to get to. The endpoints are what impact quality of life and quality of life does not have a, a build period. Quality of life is enduring and, it, and it's continuous. So we're constantly looking for solutions that are, are not just for partial uh, effect, but how it will sustain over time and continue to work towards improvement and quality of life, not just reduction and utilization of healthcare resources. No, absolutely. That's uh, some fantastic insight there, um, especially with the, you know, the the very linear thought process that I think generally everybody has with, you know, point to point care and so forth. It is really a, a cycle 
uh, and, on, and you know, ongoing and stuff. But uh, thank you so much for coming on, Cole. Uh, we are unfortunately at time. Um, if you have time to stick around and answer some of the questions, uh, you know, over the chat, uh, we would absolutely love it. Um, and uh, wishing you the best of luck with the weather system that's coming yeah. in uh, to you as well. So uh, uh, thank you. Down and, and you know, I hope uh, I hope it all goes well for you uh, as uh, as Ian as, as Hurricane Ian uh, uh, makes landfall uh, over there. Thank you so much, everybody. Be safe and appreciate your time. No, thank you, Cole. Thank you so much. Okay, Dr. Cole Zanetti there, um, giving us some insight from the VA. I'm just going to put the uh, screen share back up here. Um, really, really wonderful insights and some, uh, and some good uh, food for thought uh, around that continuum of care, uh, rather than uh, looking at it uh, from a point to point uh, basis uh, and some excellent info around about partnering with the VA as well. So please do check out the information in the chat. Uh, Dr. Zanetti's LinkedIn, as well as Susan and Jim's LinkedIn's are all in the chat as well. So please do feel free to connect with them uh, throughout the event and post the event as well. Um, we do have a packed schedule in front of us um, uh, with uh, three more interviews before the hour is up. Uh, but before I move on to the next uh, interview here, I just want to inform everybody, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Stan is currently teaching at the Columbia Business School Digital Health Strategy Program. Um, it is currently live. And on its last day of the first part of the full cohorts. Um, so do please check out in the chat, uh, Ayana and Ansley should be putting in some info about how you can get some money off the upcoming course in October, uh, which is, uh, is going to be around smart investing in digital health. So please do check that out. Uh, do sign up if you have any issues um, signing up with the uh, uh, exclusive uh, symposium tuition rate that's uh, that's in the chat now, please do email Stan, uh, swk16 at gsb.columbia.edu, um, and we can uh, hopefully sort it out so you uh, you get your discounted uh, tuition and uh, are able to join Stan uh, in October uh, for a very worthwhile course. Uh, as mentioned earlier as well, the uh, Innovators Summit, uh, which we are bringing to New York City for one day uh, only, uh, and the rest of the time virtual between November 29th and December 1st, is, uh, is live with ticket sales. It is in the early bird stage right now. Prices will go up uh, around mid-October, uh, if not the beginning of. Uh, so please feel free to check that out. Again, information will be in the chat. Uh, 